the beginnings of the University of Manchester's long-standing involvement with the local community can actually be traced back right to its origins in the 19th century. The chemist Henry Roscoe initiated the science lectures for the people. Now Roscoe delivered these lectures alongside very eminent colleagues in what was known then as Owen College. Local audiences, literally numbering in their thousands, turned up for the lectures on topics that were very, very varied, such as the indestructibility of matter, spectrum analysis, or cold fields, the unconscious action of the brain, um, even the natural history of paving stones. Now, the lectures actually ran for 13 years and were gathered together and printed, and they were really successful in profiling the science and the engineering of the city. To celebrate Manchester being designated as the European City of Science this year, in 2016, the University of Manchester Library has digitised these lectures and will make them freely available online for everyone in the city to be able to access to them. This is a truly exciting development to digitise all of these lectures. At a time when there's so much talk of impact in higher education, it's fascinating to revisit one of the most exciting examples of this in operation. Now, these lectures were very appropriately named Science for the People, and I think that's a really, really important point because I believe that every one of us are born scientists and whether or not we choose to, to develop our scientific knowledge is up to us. But these lectures actually helped everyone to develop their scientific knowledge for a penny. And so all of these people were going to these lectures and able to develop their scientific knowledge, able to unleash their inner scientist and engineer in them. I think that would be quite interesting to see the attendance lists of some of these lectures. And maybe, you know, they, they were the future scientists and the future engineers who were helping to solve those big engineering grand challenges of the Victorian era. I would urge anyone to go out and read these amazing lectures. And it doesn't matter where you are um, or who you are, you could be an academic at the university or someone just sitting at home who wants to be inspired by science. They're actually freely available for everybody.